Hi, I'm Alan with Alan's Firearms and Guns Plus More. This is a plus more. Um, before I get started, I want to explain a couple of things. One, I haven't done a video in a while for a number of reasons. It's my health. I've been going through a lot of stuff. And two, uh, YouTube is screwing around with me. Um, they demonetize my station, my, my channel. I have to put all my stuff on private. I have to actually unlist it all, re-edit it, so um, it doesn't have any references to my uh, homepage, my, my uh, .com site, or it, the, the promotion of any sale of any firearm or firearm product. I know, they are really screwed up. So in the meantime, um, because of my health issues, I had throat and mouth cancer. The radiation has destroyed my teeth. So I have only a few teeth left, so it's going to look kind of weird until um, I have the replacements put in. In the meantime, it's taken a year and a half to get taste back. I lost all my taste buds. Doing That being said, as I've gotten a lot of my taste back, there are only a few things that taste good to me. One of which is smoked foods. Weird, but <laughs> what can I tell you? So I've been, I bought a, uh, an offset smoker. I've been, which means it actually burns real wood. Um, and it's not direct. It's a firebox and then there's a cooker section. Um, I made some mods for it. And I want to uh, show you those mods to help the beginners like myself make it easier for them to smoke foods and cook on a barbecue, barbecue foods and smoke foods. Um, there's a little bit of a difference. Barbecue is a little higher temperature, it's still a longer cook than grilling. And then there's smoking, which is a much longer cook, what they call low and slow. Low temperature, slow cook, you know, long time. And then there's high temperature, fast cook, which is barbecue. And then there's just, hey, let's burn the food. That's grilling uh, really fast and just get it on, get it off, feed the family. Each one gives you a, a different taste uh, level. The slower, in my opinion, the better. There's a number of uh, YouTube channels that I recommend. Baby Back Maniac, he's got a dry sense of humor. Very, I think he's very funny. Um, I like his personal stuff about his family that he puts in. Uh, and, he's, and you learn something. Uh, next level up is uh, T. Roy Cooks. This guy's got a personality bigger than his, his house. And he's a lot of fun and just seems like such a good-natured guy. And then there's uh, Harry uh, Sue, Slap My Daddy barbecue, which I don't get the name, but hey, Harry Sue, he's the technician, but also great personality, wants to share his, his knowledge and his talents. Uh, he was on a major uh, barbecue TV show at one point. Um, he's really great. Those are the guys I, I, that inspired me to actually go out by the cooker and uh, then end up after a number of cooks realizing, I need help. Because what they teach you is real important, but they're doing things on a much larger scale. We're doing things myself. This is for the backyard guy, the beginner, the little guy, uh, to learn from me as I learn from them and my mistakes. Um, my first brisket came out unbelievably great because I didn't know what I was doing. Once I started knowing what I was doing and trying to follow all the rules and, and stuff about this, it started turning into desert food, meaning dried out and terrible. So one of the things that I found is hard is keeping the temperature um, at a constant and the temperature of the food, being able to watch it instead of being on top of it being um, inside. So I bought a system, this one, which is a thermometer setup that you could attach to your uh, grill 
and the meats. It will tell you the temperature of your grill and your meats, and this way you keep constant temperature. And that was okay, but it didn't solve all my problems. So I went out and got what's called a lava rock, and that is a temperature control unit, which will be in the next video. This video is the mods I put on, what I did to the barbecue smoker to make it, to make it better to use those on there. And what it was, was I bought these, these little grommets. And what they actually do is it's a silicone high temperature grommet that you drill a hole. I bought this hole drill, haven't even opened it yet. We're gonna do this together. Uh, put a hole in the side of the smoker, put this in there. This fits into the hole. It's got a, a slot down here that you can um, put into, so the metal holes it. And what that's for is so you can take the probes and push it through this slot so it's inside and easy to use. What I was doing is putting them down the smokestack and it's just, it, it messes up the cabling because it's all the smoke is hitting it constantly in the heat of the high temperature that leaves the smoker. So we're going to install these today. And I'm going to show you from start to finish how these go in. And um, then I'm going to do the video on the lava rock. And I'll also do a, a video and review on the temperature device I got and my opinion on why or why you shouldn't get that one instead of a different one. Okay, so you have my explanation about my mouth, so I don't have to do that again, and you have uh, my explanation why I got the smoker because of my difficulty in eating and also what YouTube is doing to me. So let's move forward and install these pieces in the unit. Okay, so this is my smoker. I told you this is the firebox. Okay, this is where I build the fire. And the smoke goes through this chamber and up into here. And there are my grills. And, whoa, it needs a cleaning. <laughs> I still have the water in it from the last brisket I did. But keeping the temperature in here a constant is difficult when you're burning all different size woods in here. Now yeah, your charcoal is your main source of heat and after the first, uh, when, once your meat hits a certain temperature, uh, supposedly, it doesn't take any on any more smoke. And a lot of guys wrap it in foil. It has not been successful for me. As a matter of fact, they did, those guys I talked about uh, did a test between foil wrapped, paper wrapped, and unwrapped. And even though the unwrapped was not as juicy as the foil, it had the best flavor, uh, the unwrapped. And, the, and that's what they preferred. And the foil wrap that I've tried, um, it didn't help any. It was still dry, probably because I cooked it too long. And the unwrapped, the very first one I did, which I only wrapped it for an, less than an hour at the very end with uh, some juice, uh, came out the best. So that's how I'm going to do it from now on. Um, what I need to do is I need to put those grommets in here. So I have looked this over and I decided the best place for me to put the grommets would be at this level. I mean, at the middle level, so the wires either can come up through this grill or right to this grill. So right about there on the smoker. I'm going to turn this so I have more room and it's easy to see. So I'm going to put it in right, right about here on the smoker. So I'm going to put it right about here on the smoker where... I have the, the grommet here, which is going to be right in between the two grills. And this handle, which stays nice and cool, I'm going to put a little shelf on here to put the so I can lay the controller on it. Because it's wired and it is not Wi-Fi. So I'm going to be using that along with a Wi-Fi temperature gauge. And hopefully 
As long as they look like they're in sync, I can use it, sit inside, play video games, watch TV, or do other manly things <laughs> uh, while I wait for it to cook. Um, barbecue is great. It's, it, it, it so much fits into my lifestyle, like my firearms, because, I mean, what, what more can a man want to do is, is, is play with knives, fire, and um, eat, <laughs> you know? So that's where I am right now with this. Let's get the drill set up so we can cut the hole for the grommets. Okay, so I measured this out where I want it. I want it right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a center punch. I have a little punch here right where I want to put the, the unit. I'm right-handed. I'm doing this left-handed. Okay. Wow. Hard metal. Okay, now... I'm going to start it off with a smaller hole because that's how you do things. By the way, if you're hearing all the wind and everything and the reason I'm on my lanai instead of outside in the back is we're having a tropical storm and we have a hurricane tropical storm warning. I don't even know if it's still in effect, but it was last night when I went to sleep. Oh. Okay, so there's the, the first one. Okay, so now that I have my small hole drilled, I'm going to take my one and a quarter inch bit, which is, cost me, I already pre-cut it open because otherwise... You don't need to watch me cut a plastic thing open. This is this is one and a quarter inches, and um, that starter hole will make this easier. Now I'm just going to cut this. Sorry if I'm out of the picture. have a nice hole for the grommet. Edges are a little sharp, so I'm going to get a file and take care of that, and I'll be right back. Now, I'm lucky because I actually have a grinding wheel, a little grinding stone that will fit in my drill. It'll make my life a little bit easier. Hey, Kelly. Come here, baby. Come here. Yeah. Okay. That's Kelly, my wonder dog. She's a wonder, because I always wonder what the fuck she's going to do to make me laugh next. And she's a little sweetheart. She makes these little cute squeaky sounds. I don't consider her my dog. I consider her my daughter. Okay. She won't get leave this spot. This is her spot. She loves to be in this spot. So I'm going to have to put her down because otherwise she'll sit here all day. Okay. So now with this wheel, I can smooth up the edge. And I'm going to stand up again. Okay, 
So that's nice and smooth. Now, the right thing for me to do now is spray this with some high temperature paint. But being that we're on a video and I forgot to buy high temperature paint, I'm going to continue this. I'm going to install the grommet, and then when I get some high temperature paint, I'll just spray it, take the grommet out, spray it, and put the grommet back in. But for now, let's just go get the grommet and put it in. Raw metal moisture, which most of us have in the air, uh, especially in Florida, it's mostly moisture. Um, that do not mix together well. Okay, so I got part of it in. Okay, it's in and it wasn't too bad to get it in. It's not exactly straight, but you know what? I don't give a crap about that. It's in. And now I can pass my probes right through that little slot. And this will keep the smoke in and the heat in. Wow, that came out better than I thought it would <laughs> for a quick without any planning video I did. Okay, so thanks for watching and the next video will be on the lava rock.